What's up, what's up? This video is for you if you are not making the time to take care of your health. And more specifically, if you're not take, making the time to take care of your health and you're using work or business uh, as kind of the justification for that. And I'm not here to like shame you or bash you um, if that's you because there is something extremely noble about that. Obviously, as men, we are called to provide for our families. We are called to multiply our wealth and the resources that God has given us. And dedicating time and being diligent with our work is a good thing. right? The Bible says that the power to build wealth comes from God. right? And so it's a good thing to dedicate time to that. Um, but if you find yourself using the justification of, oh, I can't work out because I need to work more, then that mindset in and of itself and that thought pattern isn't just harming your health, but I'm going to present to you that it's also potentially harming your wealth building capabilities. Um, and so in this video, uh, what I'm going to be doing is going into that mindset and how to change that mindset so that you can not just dedicate more time to your health and actually be healthy so you are able to like, utilize and enjoy your wealth. Um, but so that you can also potentially, potentially uh, have a mindset shift that improves your ability to produce wealth, to build your business, to produce more income, to provide for your family. Um, and then I'm also going to give you a quick breakdown of strategy, what to do with your workouts. If you do feel like you are short on time, you're like, okay, Gabe, I get it. I need to, I need to dedicate time, but I don't know how to make good use of that time. Um, and then I'm going to give you also a quick breakdown on what to do nutrition wise. If you don't want to be the guy who's like, you know, meal prepping for hours at a time um, or, you know, cooking for two hours a day. Uh, and I'll give you a little gift at the end that will help with that, especially if you're on the go and eating out or you need to Uber Eats or something like that. Um, so first and foremost, the mindset that we need to adopt if we are using, you know, working as an excuse to not work out. We need to understand that if you are using work as a justification to not work out, that you're operating from a place of scarcity, from a place of scarcity. And remember that word, it's probably a word that you've heard people in the business world talk about all the time. That's really where I've heard it most is this scarcity mindset, which is a state of a lack, right? Which is a state of not acknowledging. And I'm gonna give you the biblical take, okay? This isn't like some kind of woo-woo business, like a mindset stuff, but scarcity biblically is a state of not acknowledging all of the goodness and abundance that God's given you. Scarcity, the scarcity mindset, is the mindset that Adam and Eve were in, in the garden right before they fell, because God had given them access to everything easily and freely, is what the word says. <laughs> access to everything easily, everything they needed easily and freely. That's like the ultimate state of abundance, of richness, of wealth, is everything you need easily and freely. And when they decided to focus on what they didn't have, which was the knowledge, right? The one thing they didn't have, um, they focused on what they didn't have. Like, ah, I don't have enough. That scarcity mindset, they ended up falling into sin. And of course, you know, they had to pay the repercussions of that. So we all have to pay the repercussions for that sin, <laughs> um, that original sin. So the scarcity mindset is uh, extremely harmful, obviously. And it's that state of lack, right? And it's the same state that you're in when you fall into that justification of, oh, oh, well, I, I have, I can't work out. I can't take care of my health because I have to work. Like, let's just extrapolate that mindset out to its logical extreme. And if you feel like this sounds extreme, then that's okay because sometimes we need to use extremes to paint the picture because we sometimes only understand extremes, right? Um, and, and the reality is, is the extreme doesn't mean it's illogical. So let's let's go to the logical extreme. The logical extreme of that small thought of I can't work out because I need to work. What that is saying is, if I do dedicate time to honoring my body, then I won't be able to produce. I won't be provided for. I won't be taken care of. What that's saying at the logical extreme is I don't believe that God will still take care of me financially if I dedicate time to take care of my health and my body right now. What that's saying at the logical extreme is that I don't believe God is big enough to give me both. I don't believe God's big enough 
to give me both prosperity and health. And so I'm going to sacrifice health so that I, in my own self-reliance, can attempt to build my own prosperity. Like, think about how insulting of belief that is about who God is, right? Like, God, no, no, no. Like, I know you're big and I know you do things, but you're not big enough to, to still provide for me if I dedicate, you know, an hour to this workout today. There's no way. Like, if I don't do this, if I don't sacrifice myself, my own will on the altar, if I don't sacrifice the body that you gave me for, for some money, you're not going to take care of me, right? Like, think about the level of money worship and mammon worship that that is, right? Like, like money isn't evil. I don't believe that money's evil. The, the Bible even says that, like, the, the money, uh, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Um, and I don't even think that necessarily means that loving money, period, is evil. It's the root of all kinds, all types of evil. Um, but, but, again, money is, is an abundance. It's a resource. It's something that God gives us. Um, but when you're worshiping money, you're placing it above God, you're placing it above other things that God calls you to do. You're saying, you know, I'm going to sacrifice my health. I'm going to sacrifice honoring my body, which is a command from God, for some extra money, 45 minutes of work, an hour extra of work. Like, that's a very insulting belief to have, right? Um, and so instead of being in that mindset where you, you're saying, God, you're too small to give me both, we need to switch into an abundance mindset, right? And what that means is we acknowledge and we come into agreement with God's original promise that we're, uh, we have access to in Christ Jesus, which is, God, you are big enough to give me everything I need easily and freely. God, if you command me to honor my body, then what I can safely assume is that you've placed the power within me to be able to honor my body and multiply my resources and be a good steward of my wealth. Um, and that in and of itself isn't just a more abundant mindset that, 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 that empowers you to believe that you're capable, even if you, let's say you work an hour less on average per week than somebody who doesn't work out. You're, you're so capable because God gives you the power to produce wealth that you're still going to outproduce your competition, even if you're taking care of your body, right? So that mindset, that abundance mindset, um, it, is, is, it empowers you more not just to produce, but it also is more accurate with who God truly is. It's more accurate with the nature of who God is, right? This lighting is kind of freaking me out. I'm in this new place in Tennessee, and I don't have anything on my walls, and so sometimes the light looks like a weird white light shining from the back for some reason that abundance mindset it's in more alignment with who god really is with who jesus really is um there's this this uh idea that i heard um that uh when jesus bled on the crown of thorns uh, the, the thorns uh, were placed in the garden uh that it made it hard for adam to cultivate the garden uh, which is kind of like that that curse uh, where it's, it was hard for, for Adam to, uh, you know, to produce wealth, right? It took the sweat of his brow to work for him to get what he needed because of the thorns. And there's this idea that when Jesus bled on the thorns, he was actually uh, redeeming um, our ability to produce wealth, that he was breaking the curse of poverty on our lives. And so in Christ Jesus, we have to believe that because of who he is, and because of his grace and because of the power that he's placed within us and how the Bible says that the same power that's, that was in Christ Jesus that reason that is within us, we, we need to come into agreement with the fact that God has given us the power to produce wealth, okay? And that means, of course, financially, but that also means with our health, okay? And so because of who God is, we can safely assume that if we're doing what he's asked us to do and honoring our bodies, he will still and is still big enough to provide for us financially, to empower us to build our businesses, to empower us to increase our income, to empower us to multiply resources. Okay, those two things can happen. And if we're in alignment with who God really is, will happen in unison. Okay, they will happen in unison. If you're sacrificing one for the other, then you're, you're limited in your thinking about who God really is and what he's made you capable of. And that's a very dangerous place to be in. Um, and so we want to expand. Uh, we want to expand our belief of how, good, how big God is and what he's really capable of empowering us to do. Um, 
that that is kind of the mindset around this. And there, there's there's so much more we can get into um, with the mindset around this. And if we really remind ourselves, you know, God is big enough to empower me to produce wealth and take care of my health. If we come into agreement with that, then you'll start to do both, and you'll start to receive the goodness of God in both. Okay. I guess the last thing I want to say on the mindset of this is uh, that even apart from the biblical um, kind of take on this, just on the surface, the idea that you have to sacrifice wealth to, to, to take care of your health is just completely false just on the surface, right? Because studies consistently show that the highest earners across any industry tend to be the most attractive people in that industry. They tend to be the people who are the most fit in that industry. And so many countless business leaders in the world are both very wealthy and extremely healthy, right? Guys like Ed Milet, uh, guys like uh, Mark Zuckerberg, right? Guys like uh, Jeff Bezos. These guys are some of the wealthiest in the world and they're not just not unhealthy. They're not just not overweight. They're not just not fat. These guys are jacked. These guys are athletes, right? Mark Zuckerberg like wins jujitsu competitions now. Jeff Bezos has freaking a bicep vein, um, and uh, Ed Milet's jacked. He's super duper crazy, nutty jacked. Okay, so I think it's really funny when people say like, ah, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't need to be jacked. Um, you know, I don't need to, I don't need to be, you know, buff or anything. I just don't want to be fat. I'm like, why not, bro? Like, why not? Do you, like, like actually think about. And again, that's that scarcity mindset. Just think about it. You're, you're literally limiting yourself when you say, ah, you know, I don't need to be in that great of shape. Uh, I just need to be, you know, not in crappy shape. That's like saying, oh, you know, I just don't want to be poor, uh, but I don't need to be wealthy. I don't want to be wealthy. And you're like, what? You just, you don't believe that God's big enough to give you power to not just not suffer, but to, to, to be in a state of thriving? Like, it's just crazy. Anyway, all of this stems from not believing um, accurately uh, about how big God really is and what he can really empower you to do in your life. Um, so that, that that's really kind of the cure, I guess, at the foundational level, like is the cure for every issue that we're facing in life is we need to know Jesus. We need to know God. We need to know his nature. Um, if you know his nature, then you'll know that he's given you the power to honor your body as he commands and to produce wealth and be a good steward as he also commands, right? Um, and so that that's how we need to approach this from a mindset standpoint. Now, Quickly, uh, from a workout standpoint, if you're now in agreement with, okay, God, Gabe, I get it. Like, I get it. God gives us the power to produce our wealth and our health at the same time. Got it. How do I do that? Uh, in a time efficient manner, because a, it, it would be poor stewardship to waste time, right? Um, with your workouts. Uh, in a time efficient manner, what you need to be doing with your workouts is you need to be resistance training. Okay, resistance training, resistance training, resistance training. That is the most time efficient workout method to improve your health, period, right? Like running is fine. There's nothing wrong with running. Um, if you really enjoy running, you can do it. Um, and this is like not a shot at endurance athletes. I respect the heck out of you guys um, for a bunch of different reasons. Running is great. Um, but uh, it's not the most time efficient way to uh, produce positive health outcomes. Resistance training is. Resistance training does mean lifting weights. It also uh, could mean some form of calisthenics. Uh, it also can mean using like bands or something like that, right? Resistance training, doing sets and reps of lifting exercises. Um, that in and of itself is the most time efficient way to improve your health. It builds muscle, obviously makes you look better, feel better, um, be stronger and more functional, um, but it also improves your metabolism. Excuse me, because all that muscle that you build from the resistance training specifically, which isn't built, in cardio and running, uh, that muscle is the most metabolically active tissue on our bodies. Like, like this, this right here, this muscle that we can grab from resistance training. That was kind of weird, just like grab my chest, but it's cool. <laughs> it's the most metabolically active tissue that we have on our bodies, and so uh, it, what that means is it literally just burns calories twenty four seven. And so when you build muscle through resistance training, uh, you burn the calories from the workout. Just like you do when you run, you burn the calories from the, from the run. But when you resistance train, the muscle stays on your body. And so you burn more calories 24 seven perpetually until the end of time <laughs> because you built the muscle. It's like the passive income or the monthly recurring revenue of uh, your health, right? Like 
in monthly recurring service-based subscription businesses, you make the sale to the customer one time, and so long as that's maintained, the relationship and the service is maintained, they're satisfied, they pay you every single month. It's the same thing with resistance training. Once the muscle is built, of course you make the sale of the calorie burn when you built it, but then so long as it's maintained, uh, it burns calories in a recurring <laughs> in a recurring way, 24-7, 365. Um, and so that's one of the other reasons why resistance training is the most time efficient way um, to get healthy, okay? So make sure we're focused on resistance training. Um, cardio is a bonus. It's fantastic. Again, I'm not crapping on cardio. I'm not the guy who like hates running or anything like that. But it is, it is a bonus. Um, now, last thing is with nutrition. A lot of people get caught up on, oh, I don't have time to figure out like what I need to eat. Really, that just comes from, of course, the mindset. Um, <laughs> and we've been talking about this whole time. But then just a lack of knowledge, right? Bob says, my people will perish from lack of knowledge. Uh, so there's a few things you need to know as the basics to make your nutritional decisions uh, easy um, so that you don't actually have to make a lot of decisions or think about this quite a bit. Um, and the two big things you need to focus on are just calories and protein. Calories and protein. Calories is the amount of energy that you're taking in. Protein is a nutrient that supports uh, muscle growth and keeps you satiated, keeps you full. Um, and so each day you want to be setting yourself a calorie ceiling which is I don't go over these calories because if you go over those calories, you just gain fat. That's what that is. Um, so you set yourself a calorie ceiling and then a protein floor. A protein floor is this is my goal. I want to have at least this amount of protein so that I stay full enough to not overeat. So I support the muscle growth from the workouts and I actually get more out of that time that I'm investing. Um, and so that I'm healthy, right? I have a healthy body composition. Calories and protein. Um, I have so many different videos on this. Again, I want to keep this brief. Um, uh, maybe I'll link it down below. I have one that's called uh, If You Can't Lose Weight, Watch This. Find that on my channel for, for a more in-depth breakdown there. But essentially what you wanna do is find your calorie uh, ceiling, don't go over that, find your protein floor, um, and, and, don't, and, and try to hit that every single day. Um, the way that you make sure you hit those things is when you're eating your foods, you plug them into some kind of nutritional tracker, okay? That is the, that is the just simplest, most time efficient way to do it. There are a bunch of other ways that you can lose weight, yes, uh, but this is the most guaranteed, simple, time-efficient way to do it. That's why I'm advising you to do it specifically because you're watching this video. Um, <laughs> you, you, you need to make time for taking care of your health, right? Um, and the nutritional tracker, uh, like a MyFitnessPal-style app, uh, takes the guesswork out of it and it's you know as accurate as humanly possible. Uh, so plug it in, uh, make sure you don't go over that calorie target, uh, that calorie ceiling, and hit that protein goal each day. Um, if that uh, helps, good. If you still feel like you need some guidance on like, okay, well, what foods are the easiest for me to actually do that? Uh, I'm gonna drop our restaurant guide below um, in the description. And this is literally a uh, document, a PDF clickable document uh, with the top 100 grossing restaurants in the United States or 99 uh, grossing restaurants in the United States. And uh, you'll see like, you know, Miller's Ale House or whatever, which is like sports bar. You can click on it. It'll drag you to uh, a, a menu, essentially, of the best foods to order from those restaurants uh, for you to be able to hit your calorie, uh, stay under your calorie ceiling and hit your protein goal. Um, lowest calorie, higher, highest protein foods at all these restaurants. And of course, like if you're at the mom and pop sports bar in town, um, the, the, the menu will probably be pretty similar to something like Miller's Ale House. So you can just use the Miller's Ale House and it'll probably be pretty close. Um, but yeah, this should save you a ton of time, especially if you find yourself eating out or ordering Uber Eats, um, you know, in for lunch or whatever, because you probably do those things because you're short on time anyway. And so you need to know what to eat when you get there, right? Um, so yeah, that is that. I hope that this helps you guys. And um, remember that God is big enough to give you the power to do both, right? He's big enough to give you the power to do both. Um, and again, like all of these problems, any problem that we face, I just continue to learn this time and time again in my own journey in building my business and taking care of my own health and my marriage is that any problem I'm facing stems from not knowing Jesus, okay? So the more I get to know him and understand who he is, the more I get to see the fruits um, of the Holy Spirit um, in my life. And so I hope that you do the same. I hope this helps you do that in your health and in your wealth. Take care, guys. Love you all.